Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. If you've been watching these videos, you'll know that we've been talking a lot about the journey, the quest, the pilgrimage. And today we're looking at the story of the three magi, the, the three wise ones, the wise men who come out of the east to visit Jesus at, at his birth or near his birth time. And they come to bring homage to him. And, and you know, this notion of, of quest making really relates to the story of the three magi. They go on a quest. They see something in the cosmic world that's transformed or changed. They see a star in the heavens and they follow the star ultimately to Bethlehem where they pay homage to the birth of the Christ child. And they offer him great gifts and then return back to their home. And, and if you look through all the great stories uh, that we love, Many of them are rooted in quest making. I mean, I think about the story of Shrek, one of my favorite of all animated uh, films. He, he goes on a quest to rescue Princess Fiona in order to get his home back. And of course, the quest changes, transforms him. He finds love in a way that he never imagined. And there's Marlin in the, the great uh, film classic, The Finding Nemo. And his son Nemo is abducted by human divers. And he goes on this great uh, quest, this pilgrimage to find his son, and ultimately he's transformed by this quest making. And you can just go down the list of stories. You think about the uh, Lord of the Rings. It's a quest to bring to an end the, the, the dark ring of the Lord of Darkness. It's the Battlestar Galactica. It's a journey or a quest to find Earth. Uh, you know, Tintin are stories made up of a quest by Tintin to figure out some nefarious evil. And, and, and you can go down the list, the, the Knights of the Round Table, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It's all about make quest making. Monty Python did a little spoof on that when they made the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. They kind of mocked and parodied uh, quest making. But be, under, let be understood that a quest and going on quests and that quest making, that deep journey is an essential part of who we are. Uh, Joseph Campbell back in 1949 wrote a book called the hero of a thousand faces. And his basic point is that if you look through all the world religions and the mythologies, living and dead mythologies, and you look through all these stories and you look in modern literature, you'll find that this hero going on a quest permeates all cultures, all religions. You see it in the story of Osiris in Egyptian mythology. You see the story of the quest that Buddha goes on, or Jesus, or Moses, or Jacob, or Abraham. In fact, this notion of sacred journey, pilgrimage, quest is found deeply rooted in many, many Bible stories. And it gets me thinking about you and me. If that's true, what about you and me? What kind of quests are we on today? I think being a follower of Jesus is really substituting one quest for a better quest, one journey for a better journey. Some of the journeys we go on don't take us in very good, to very good places, does it? necessarily take us in the right direction. We can go on the quests of the world for money or fame or fortune or a host of other things, but it doesn't really get us to where we need to go. Jesus says, follow me, follow me. Pick up your cross and follow after me. And when you look at the story of Jesus, it really is one of quest. He, he comes from God to us. He becomes one of us. God, in a sense, becomes one of us. And then Jesus is initiated into this sacred journey at his baptism and through his miracle making and his teachings, he, he grows in this quest making motif in his life. Till finally, he enters into the pivotal moment of his initiation into this new consciousness. He journeys to the cross, his passion, and ultimately his death on the cross brings to a completion, initiation into God's way of love. See, on the cross, he does probably the greatest thing anyone could ever do. He offers forgiveness to his tormentors. But of course, the story of the quest is always one of return. He journeys ultimately to death, but then returns in the resurrection. And he reveals to us in his own transformation, the very kind of being we ourselves are meant to be. I want you to think about your own quest making today and where you, where you might be going. What's, what's the point of your life? What's the direction of your life? Where are you, where are you headed? What quest are you on? Because I know you're on some kind of journey. You're going somewhere, whether you have your drag in your feet or whether you got your, your foot down to the pedal with the, uh, down to the very bottom of the brake on your car, so to speak, you're, you're, you're going somewhere, even if you're resisting it to the tilt. And, and I think the question is, how do we allow ourselves to sort of release into the journey, to embrace it, to, to move with it? 
we believe here at Trillium that the highest form of quest making is always built around love. It's about fulfilling the purposes of love in life. It's about allowing love's power and, and strength to take over our lives. It's about allowing the conduit of love to move, move through us. And it's the love pilgrimages, the love quests that are the highest order for us. You don't have to go out on a quest and be some great hero in the mythologies and slay some demonic evil or some dark force coming at you. It's not even really about Sauron and Lord of the Rings coming at you with the ring of power. It's about learning to remove the hindrances to love in life that are so much a part of us. It's about coming into a connection with all the love that's around us all the time. The Creator's song being sung to us all the time in love, and yet our hindrances are so powerful. It's about learning how to forgive with every part of yourself. That's truly the great heroic moment in life when you can offer pure and total forgiveness, when you can offer unending mercy to people, when you can keep extending out the goodness of God in your life. Then in those places, you are fulfilling the great heroic quest that Jesus calls us to. And in that sense, I think Campbell might have missed the boat with Jesus. Maybe not quite understood what the purpose of his quest making is about. I think we are called, when we follow Jesus, to really be on a quite different quest than even in the, uh, as found in other ancient mythologies. The, the love purpose in life is meant to be fulfilled through you. And we sang a, a song on church on Sunday called, I am the light of the world. Let me just read to you a little bit of it. It goes like this, uh, and this is Jesus speaking. I am the light of the world. You people come and follow me. If you follow and love, you'll learn the mystery of what you were meant to do and be. And what does love look like? What does the quest of love look like in life? And it looks like this. He says, to find the lost and lonely one, to heal the broken soul with love, to feed the hungry children with warmth and good food, to feel the earth below the sky above, to free the prisoner from all chains, to make the powerful care, to rebuild the nations with strength of goodwill, to see God's children everywhere. To bring hope to every task you do, to dance at a baby's new birth, to make music in an old person's heart, and sing to the colors of the earth. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. You people, come and follow me. If you follow and love, you'll learn the mystery of what you were meant to do and be. And there's the quest right there that Jesus lays out for us. May, may the power of God's spirit of love infiltrate you to the, to the utmost degree. May the hindrances to love that so often cloud us to see what moves around us be taken from you. That's the great quest. And when those hindrances are removed, you will experience a joy and a peace that goes beyond all human understanding. Go in peace. Go in love. Bring about the great reign of God and light on earth.